to whoever is actually watching this video. This is only the second on my channel and the first where I'm actually talking and showing my face. For this video, I'm going to be ranking the 22 books I read in 2023 from worst to best. For the first chunk, I'm going to do really short one sentence reviews and once I get to my top 5 to 10, then I'll go more in depth with my thoughts. I hope you're having a wonderful day and let's get started. I'm realizing now that my least favorite book of the year is kind of an unpopular opinion, so please don't click off, but my least favorite book that I read in 2023 was Notes on an Execution by Danny Kukafka. I gave this book one and a half stars. I gave it one star because the author wrote a book, like she was good at actually making a novel, and then 0.5 stars for my actual enjoyment of it. I feel like this book was advertised as being more in-depth and thought-provoking than it actually was. I mean, looking at the reviews at the back, they call it compassionate, thought-provoking, an examination, but I didn't see that at all with this book. I feel like it was very surface level and didn't go in depth at all. And maybe that's like the psychology, sociology major in me, but I expected a lot more from this. Also, I know the book isn't specifically about this, but the fact that they wanted to throw in one tiny little paragraph that talks about the issue of race within the prison system was laughable to me. And of course they had a character talk about voting for Obama, which I assume is a tongue in cheek thing from the author, but there's no real indication that it is, so I'm not sure about that. My next book is a short story collection by Eric LaRocca called The Trees Grew Because I Bled There, and I gave that one two stars. I feel like all the stories were very mid, and the only one that was actually sort of interesting had a plot twist that I've seen done before, so I saw it coming from a mile away. Next is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I gave this three stars. I think I just have to accept the fact that classics are not for me. This is a very accessible read, but it took me three months to get through and is the reason I only read 22 books this year. Next is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I also gave this three stars. This is a dark mystery thriller, but I was only really interested in the romance. I will say that I did enjoy the ending, even though I've seen some complaints about it. The Death of Vivigoji by Kwaki Amezi, I gave three stars. Turns out there are some lines that you can cross for me not to enjoy gay romance, but I do understand why the author went down that route. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, I gave 3.25 stars. I quite enjoyed it until the ending, which left us with about seven unanswered questions, and it read less like open-ended and more like the author didn't know how to solve all the mysteries she sprinkled throughout. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, I gave 3.25 stars. This book is just 400 pages of a girl getting sexually abused with no insight given. Like notes on the execution, this was very surface level. The Push by Ashley Audrey and I gave 3.25 stars. This book wants you to question the truth of reality but doesn't really give you a reason to do so. So by the time you get to the ending, it's kind of like, yeah, I saw that coming. When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen, I gave 3.25 stars. It's a horror book that I just didn't find scary. Confessions by Kane Minato, I gave 3.5 stars. Every chapter ends with a really shocking twist, but I didn't love the writing style or the POVs. We Spread by Ian Reid, I gave 3.5 stars. I was really enjoying this book up until the ending. It created a great atmosphere of confusion and mystery, but ended way too abruptly. Everyone in this room will someday be dead by Emily Austin, I gave 3.75 stars. I wish I'd written down my thoughts about this because I cannot think of a single opinion to give you. I think there was good mental health representation. Come For Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valenti, I gave 3.75 stars. This is a really well done short horror story with an ending kind of twist that makes the whole story come together really nicely and makes you want to read it again. Before I get to my favorite books of the year, I do have some other categories to talk about. First of all, I am currently reading Deeper Fundus by Oscar Wilde and A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman, and we'll see if I get to finish these by the end of the year. There are also two books I DNF this year. But I would consider them to be soft DNF, so I hope one day I do get to finish them. The first book is Animal Farm by George Orwell. To put it simply, I started reading this book when I didn't have many books at my disposal. And once I got other books that I was more interested in, this one kind of just fell to the wayside. Plus, like I said, me and classics don't really get along. The second book I DNF was Daphne by Josh Matherman. This book has great anxiety representation, which I'm always on the lookout for, but once I actually got to the horror elements of this book, I was pretty bored. I knew if I didn't put this down and read something else, I would probably get into a reading slump and maybe not finish the book for the rest of the year. Get into my favorite books of the year. These are seven books that I rated four to five stars. First is The Humans by Matt Haig, and I gave this book four stars. 
This book is about an alien that's made to replace a mathematician on Earth who discovered the answer to this great mathematical hypothesis. And the aliens think that humans aren't ready to know this kind of information, so they send one down to destroy all evidence of it. This is just one of those books that wants you to feel grateful for your life and to see the good in humanity. If you enjoy that trope of a character being put into a world that isn't their own, then this book is literally that. That being said, the alien literally knows nothing about Earth. So at some points I see the book kind of dragging because it goes in depth into simple topics like dishwashers. I really liked the narration style, I thought it was funny, and I liked the ending even though it was a little cheesy. I also read in the author's note that he came up with this idea when he was struggling with an anxiety disorder, so maybe that's why this book has a little special place in my heart. The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, I gave 4 stars. This book is about a therapist whose patient hasn't spoken a word since she shot and killed her husband. For some reason, this book really hooked me and I couldn't put it down. I feel like it really reads like a detective mystery because the therapist is looking for clues as to why his patient isn't talking. So if you're interested in detective mysteries, you might want to pick this one up. A lot of people also tend to emphasize this crazy twist that happens in it. And okay, fine, I didn't guess the twist, but I also go into mystery books with like no thoughts head empty because I like to be surprised by the twist so it's not that crazy that I didn't guess it but if you think about it it is a twist that's been done before it's kind of a trope within mystery novels and I think that's why I see two groups of people that read this book the ones that don't often read mysteries will really enjoy this book while the people who do read mysteries a lot don't really like it Next is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I gave this book 4.25 stars. This book basically starts with a guy getting kidnapped and eventually knocked unconscious. And when he wakes up, he's strapped to a gurney in a place he doesn't recognize and his life isn't the same as it once was. This book also had me intrigued from the first chapter, which was very needed for me because the few books that I read before this started very slow. And that intrigue for me continued throughout the rest of the book. And I think that goes to show how well paced this book was. It felt like every plot point happened exactly when it was supposed to and at no point did it feel like anything was dragging. The only thing I didn't love about this book was the third act conflict. I feel like the scope of this book went a little too wide and maybe I'm the one being ridiculous because this is literally a fictional sci-fi book but it's kind of set in the real world so if you're gonna do that then you have to also think about the real world consequences of things. So for me I think that ending went a little too far. Everyone in my family has killed someone by Benjamin Stevenson. I gave 4.25 stars. I'm not really sure how to summarize this book because the blurb is just an excerpt from the beginning. But basically this family is getting together for a family reunion at a ski resort. And maybe there's a big storm and maybe they get stuck there. So then maybe it's kind of like a closed circle mystery. But I'm not really sure about that. Okay, not to be negative, but the first 100 pages of this book, snooze fest. Like, literal snooze fest, I almost stopped reading. Like, I remember starting this book and thinking, okay, this book's probably gonna be like three-ish stars. I think what really got me was that there were so many in-depth descriptions about like the setting and scenery, and I felt like my brain was literally going numb when I read it. For some reason, I could not pay attention to what he was saying, so I had to just skim through it. And I'm glad I did because now it's literally one of my favorite books of the year. I really enjoyed the narration style, it was humorous and very tongue-in-cheek, and it broke the fourth wall. So I think if you're not really interested in a mystery book like that, then you definitely won't like this one because it definitely isn't a dark mystery by any means. But it is a great mystery nonetheless. It had many reveals and my jaw was dropped a couple times. I feel like there were so many little threads that were going throughout this book and by the end everything came together and everything was interconnected and it was really rewarding. Next, Come Closer by Sarah Grant. I gave 4.5 stars. This book follows a woman who's going through some weird personality changes. She's hearing some tapping in the walls. And let's just say this is a supernatural horror and not some mental health lit fic. This is a pretty short book, so it might not mean a lot for me to say that I read it in one sitting, but I feel like that goes to show how interested I was in it and how much I enjoyed it. I can definitely see myself reading this one again because I read it back in January, so I can't really remember exactly why I enjoyed this book. I just know that I did. Normally, I'm not scared of things like horror movies and especially not books, but I was a little spooked by this one. And again, to be fair, I was reading this alone in the dark on my iPad, so that might explain why. The first book I gave five stars this year and the first book I've given five stars in the past two years of my reading journey is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. 
This book is about a woman named Martha and it follows her as she struggles through her mental health and navigates her relationships. I just need to say that I am Martha and Martha is me because I could relate to her so much when she talked about her struggles with mental health. I feel like the author of this book, who I don't know much about, but she had to have struggled with some kind of mental illness because it felt like she plucked thoughts from my head and put them on the page for me to read. It's funny that I compare myself to Martha because I remember reading reviews for this book and people were calling her annoying, so oops. <laughs> I pretend I do not see. Honestly, I feel like I'd normally hate a book like this because it's a lit fic that's very character focused and is low on plot. And I'm very much a plot girly. But again, I feel like I related so much to this book that it just carved a place in my heart and I love it. Finally, my favorite book of the year and my favorite book of all time, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. In this book, a bank robber ends up escaping into an open house viewing of an apartment and holds the people there hostage. Compared to Sorrow and Bliss, there is a little more plot to this book and even a little mystery woven throughout, but it is very character focused. Literally from the first page of this book, I knew it was going to be five stars. Let me just read a little excerpt from the second page. We don't have a plan. We just do our best to get through the day because there will be another one coming tomorrow. Sometimes it hurts. It really hurts. For no other reason than the fact that our skin doesn't feel like it's our own. Sometimes we panic. Because the bills need paying and we have to be grown up and we don't know how because it's so horribly desperately easy to fail at being grown up. Bachman's writing is just chef's kiss. There were so many lines that I tagged and highlighted throughout this book and even though this is the first book I've read by him I could honestly consider him one of my favorite authors. Like if I could write like anybody it would be Frederick Bachman. Every tone throughout this book was done perfectly whether something needed to be humorous or serious it was expertly pulled off the book was funny, it was heartwarming, it made me tear up. I just love this damn thing. Okay, those are all the books I read in 2023, ranked worst to best. I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye. This is one of those books that... This is one of those books... <laughs> it is one of them. Because sometimes it'll go in depth on simple top... Oh my god, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore.